It's one of my secret weapons. Could it be one of yours? Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a plug-in which is a bit of a secret weapon for me on drum buses, also on vocals, in fact, on tons of tracks. It's a plugin that's not talked about very often. I've looked online, there's not many videos about it. I don't see it on sale very often, if at all. And it's just sort of a little bit of a secret plugin that just doesn't really get talked about, which is quite surprising considering how revolutionary the hardware was in the 80s. I used to own two. It's one of the only pieces of hardware that I actually miss. Let's jump in. So here we are in Studio One. The plugin we're going to be looking at today is not a new plugin. It's quite old, maybe six, seven years old. It's by Waves and it's an emulation of a piece of hardware by BSS called the DPR402. I really don't see this talked about very often, which is quite surprising because at the time, in the 80s when it came out, it gained a bit of legendary status, especially on drum buses, that kind of thing. It was used on a lot of early hip hop and electro and it had a sound to it. So I'm surprised that it's not talked about more. I'm surprised that Waves don't mention it more. I'm surprised there's not more videos on it. I absolutely loved the hardware. Now, I'm not going to compare this to the hardware because I don't have the hardware to compare it to. It behaves and sounds similar to how I remember the hardware sounding, but I'm not going to get into comparing it and saying it's exactly like the hardware. It's a VCA style compressor but it also had a DSR and a limiter as well, which was quite unusual at the time to have a, a single processor that had DSing, compression and limiting in serial. Now I'm just gonna run through the controls very, very quickly and the additional controls that Waves have added to it that weren't on the original hardware. Input gain, we have the DSR, which you can change the amount, the frequency. We have the compression section with threshold ratio, attack release. As I said, it's a VCA style compressor, so similar to something like the SSL. Then we have output, we have meter, we have a sidechain monitor here, which is really useful for DSing, and we have a peak limiter. Down here we have a parallel mix section, which is really useful. Noise, I tend to keep it in off because it's just not something I really use, but you can simulate the noise on it, which was a bit of hiss. I believe if I turn up, can't really hear it. The limiter down here has a fast and slow setting. You can have it set to stereo, duo, or mid-side. Obviously, this didn't exist in the original hardware. Here, you can collapse and expand. Now, on the back of the original unit, there was a section, a uh, jumper section, where you could change, basically, the way that you had it set up. And Waves have emulated that here, normal compression, etc. You can see it can be an expander. You can emphasize the low frequencies, high frequencies in the compression. What's really good is if you click on the question mark here, it tells you what it does, so you don't have to refer to the manual. But most importantly, as in all my videos, we want to hear what it sounds like. And I want to show you why it's a bit of a secret weapon for me on the drum buses. You can also use it on the mix bus, and you can also use it on vocals, really good on vocals as well. I don't tend to use it on vocals nowadays because I like to have a bit more access to different controls in the DSing process and the compression and the EQ, et cetera. But you can use it for that, and we did use it for that in the 80s and the 90s. But my secret weapon that I use it for is on the drum bus because it just has this really nice punchy feel. I either go for the DBX160, the G bus SSL, or this wonderful compressor. So let's have a listen to how it sounds. Now, initially, as it's an 80s style compressor, I'm gonna be running the LM1 through it. I'm gonna use the 909 in it as well. And we're gonna to listen to a sample breakbeat and then we'll listen to a vocal. So let's get stuck in. So let's just have a quick listen to the beat and bypass. Typical Lin drum sound from the 80s. I've got a little bit of reverb on there, Lexicon 224, just really creating that kind of 80s sound. Uh, so that was in bypass. Now what I'm gonna do, let's just forget about this for the moment and let's just use it as a VCA compressor. So we've got it set to compressor here, and let's just, just, just have a listen to it. Mm -hmm. 
What's useful about the meters here is it shows you once it's reached a threshold. Again, it was quite unusual in the 80s to have, you know, nowadays we know this straight away, we have lots of visual references, but these kind of visual references didn't really exist on a lot of processors in the 80s, 70s and 90s. Perhaps I should say 70s, 80s and 90s. But this was really, really useful because then you'd start getting the gain reduction here. And now you can start hearing that punchy sound. Now there's no auto gain here, so I'm gonna get the levels as close as I can so we're not fooled by the louder is better. I'm just gonna bring that up a little bit because I'm getting a bit of gain reduction. It's just a really nice glue, it's quite subtle. I'd say it's more transparent than the DBX160. Another thing of course you can do is you can really, really push it. And then. So it's got that nice, pumpy, punchy feel that you would get from an SSL and a DBX160. It's actually a lot more transparent than I remember the hardware being. Um, I guess maybe that's why this noise was introduced here, but really this noise doesn't really do anything that I can really hear. Maybe it adds a bit of saturation, possibly, but you know, I kind of like the fact that it's, it's got a bit of transparency to it. because you can get that same punchy feel that you can get with an SSL or a DBX160, but not imprint so much character. And then also, of course, we had this limiter here, which was great. So in the fast setting, really nice bit of glue. just really reels it in really nicely. So another thing that we used to do with drum buses is we would put it into DS wide and we would bring this back And it would glue the high end really nicely in. So let's just have a listen to it on a 909 as well. What I tend to do with this when I use it on a 909 is push it quite far, have it on pretty standard VCA settings that you would have with um, something like an SSL uh, and then bring, back it, bring it back just a little bit in parallel. So you get that nice breathy feeling. Nice, breathy, punchy feeling.
you can take the transient off the hi-hats a little bit. Obviously, I'm over-exaggerating so you can hear what it's doing, but again, it's just, I love drum bus processing, especially in EDM, that gives it a nice pump. You know, it's something that we've done in house music since the late 80s, with 909s especially, and it just drives the track. You know, you, 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 you're affecting the transients of the drum beat and you're affecting... Uh, it just almost bounces because they can sound quite flat with drum machines. And what we wanted to do in the 80s when we had drum machines is, this is the weird thing really, is we wanted them to sound as close to real drums as we possibly could. So a way we would do that would be to inject different levels, different velocities, but also using compression, we would make the drums breathe. So they sounded a little bit more like a real drum kit in an actual room. And that's kind of how we develop these techniques, really. But going to today, again, it's something that we do use. You know, it's a sound that you're used to in clubs, especially hearing that drum beat breathe, you know, over compressed. And you can do it really, really nicely with this compressor, which is, you know, why I like using it. I love that sound, that sound. So let's have a listen to what we can do on a drum break that we've sampled off an old funk record, disco record or whatever. You can use the expander quite nicely. Best to use it quite subtly. But listen to the transients of the kick and the snare and the way the hi-hats are just kind of leveled a little bit, don't breathe quite as much. So that's it in bypass. The expander brings, it grabs everything and sucks everything up a little bit. It's also really, really nice to use just the compressor on a drum beat as well, like this. Just full reset it again. Again, that nice, typical glue. Listen to how the snare's behaving with the kick drum. That's where you can really notice it. Quite subtle, but again, lovely glue. just makes it sound really even because the, the drum beat, if you actually listen to it without compression on it, is a bit lively. The kick drum's a bit lively. It's not the best recording. It doesn't sound like they've used much compression on the original uh, disco record that I sampled. This just evens it out really nicely. Nice character, but like I said, not too much character like the DBX160. So let's have a listen to it on a vocal using it in serial. So we use a de-esser, the compressor and then the limiter. So we'd have it switched to the compress here, normal compression down the bottom here. Really nice to be able to add a bit of DS and then compress it. I don't kiss and tell. 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 
But what you can also do is use it in this DS mode here where you can choose the frequency using this sidechain monitor here. And then use these controls. So for me, it's a really nice, subtle DSer. So actually listening to this now is making me think, do you know what, actually I might start using this as a DSer again because it has a nice, smooth DS to it. Rather, I do find a lot of DSers now by companies that are specifically for DSs, DSing can sound a little bit harsh. So you spend some time adding compression and EQ, etc., to make it sound a bit, bit more natural again. But with this, it sounds pretty natural straight away. I mean, I'm pushing it a little bit further than I normally would. But of course, I have the ability to, to use the parallel down here. I don't kiss and tell. 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 Let's just zoom in on the kiss. You can hear it's really nice and rounded and really, really subtle. So I think I might go back to using this on my vocals as well for DSing. So there you have it, the Waves emulation of the BSS DPR402. Absolute drum bus legend in the 80s. And I still use it a lot now. It's a little bit of a secret weapon, like I said. I like to use a DBX160, and obviously I love the SSL. But that one I'll reach for if I'm doing some real 80s sounding stuff. It's great on 909s. But doing this review has made me realize that it is actually really nice on vocals. I don't remember really using the hardware on vocals very much, and I wish that I had now. It is a really natural sounding DSer. And like I said, the, the, the reason why I prefer using a separate DSer is to give myself more control over the EQ, the DSing process, the compression process. But using this as a DSer, like I just did, it's made me realize that I can just use it as a DSer and cut all that out, you know, I mean, it, it is a process that the whole point of the processor was to be able to DS and compress and then limit in serial. And really that's what I should be using it for. So I'm glad that I did this review because it's made me realize that it is actually a really, really good DSer as well. So thanks for watching. Honestly, go out and demo this plugin because no one ever really talks about it. I see barely any videos on it. I don't see it on sale very often on Waves, they constantly have sales on. I'm sure it probably is really, really cheap. It's definitely worth picking up because you're getting a really, really good DSer, a really good mix bus compressor, and a limiter as well. There's a limiter on it that you can just use a limiter if you want with a fast and slow setting. So it really, really is a really, really good plugin. So go and demo it. So thanks for watching. I hope that was inspiring in some way. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel, my name's Conan, until next time.